Well, most of the global economy is breathing a quiet sigh as we appear to be headed in the right direction out of a major financial catastrophe globally. But are we really heading out of the woods? Tonight's Four Corners program on ABC TV suggests that it's hardly time to crack a cold one because we may be living on borrowed time. Filmmaker, filmmaker Martin Borgs takes a provocative look at the events leading up to the global financial crisis and asks if the attempts to avoid a ruinous collapse of banks and other major finance houses may actually have set the world on the path to an even bigger meltdown. Now, Martin Borgs is not the only person asking this question. So is Boston University professor Lawrence Kotlikov, who says it's time to get real. He says the US is bankrupt. His words, not mine. Neither spending more uh, nor taxing less will help the country pay its bills. He says the solution is to clean up the mess in the tax, health care, retirement and financial systems. Uh, and we're talking about this tonight, uh, other than the fact that it's not about the federal election, uh, is because much of the world is looking to the US to try and drag us out of global um, stagnation. Now, my part-time unpaid economics correspondent is Chris Leithner from Leithner and Associates. Chris Leithner, you're also feeling very uncomfortable. I am indeed. I know it's not new to you. Who is Lawrence Kotlikoff and why is he such a, a person that we should listen to? Lawrence Kotlikoff is a professor of economics at Boston University. In roughly five years ago, in 2005 or so, um, he wrote an article uh, which appeared, uh, I think it was the St. Louis branch of the U.S. Federal Reserve, which basically put the question, is the United States bankrupt? And his unambiguous answer, yes, it is. And he basically said, why is that? Well, the gap between projected um, expenditure, the commitment that the U.S. government has made, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid benefits, pharmaceutical benefits, dropping bombs in Iran, Iraq, uh, etc. Not and, Iran yet, Chris. Uh, not yet, but um, uh, alas. Um, uh, 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 Wherever the they space, are, yes. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And the projected tax um, uh, take, uh, by his uh, estimate back in 2005 or so, is on the order of 50 to $60 trillion uh, in the uh, article which you just cited, which appeared in Bloomberg, was it last week or the week before, he has modestly revised that upward to approximately $200 trillion. That's to say that shortfall is accelerating very, very rapidly. In the Four Corners program on ABC TV tonight, the uh, filmmaker interviews, amongst others, a uh, Nobel laureate uh, for uh, economics who says we are headed for something much bigger and there's nothing we can do to avoid it. What's the argument based on? I haven't seen it yet. I'll watch with great interest. My guess would be something along the following lines. Uh, when the crisis erupted roughly two years or so ago, governments and central banks around the world in effect swept all manner of problems under their own rugs. That's to say, gee, governments are so big, central banks' balance sheets are so vast that we can borrow limitless amounts of money, not only with no pain whatsoever, but with tremendous benefit. In, in effect, uh, whether, it's, whether it's the Federal Reserve in Washington or the Bank of England or uh, the RBA in this country, they have a limitless or a bottomless checkbook, and they can write checks for any amount, and that will sort out the problem. Uh, they've simply shifted the problem, but they've done more than that. By shifting the problem, they have put in people's minds the notion that, ah, the government can always bail us out. The government can continue to spend money. The government can continue to borrow money. And because governments not only have governments not uh, tightened their belts, as the rest of us have begun to do, and certainly Americans have begun to do that, governments have vastly, vastly uh, increased their waistline. So they've, in that sense, they've made what uh, previously was a very bad problem. They've made it much worse. Now... Uh, that's uh, there are dissenting voices on this. The Nobel Prize winning economist Joseph Stiglitz, who was in town uh, a few weeks back, mm -hmm. praised the Australian government under Kevin Rudd, saying their stimulus uh, protected us from the global financial crisis and they did exactly the right thing. And this became a clear delineation in some ways for the uh, the opposition's position in the lead up into the election and the government's uh, running on their record in, in relation to the economy. Whether it's um, uh, Professor Stiglitz, uh, whether it's Paul Krugman, some of the biggest leading lights in economics say something which most of your listeners would recognize as obvious nonsense. Their assertion is that a government can borrow and spend its way into prosperity. They never tell us, however, why is it the case, if that's so, why do countries like Haiti, 
or Mozambique or Bangladesh? Why are they mired in the most abject poverty? Because they have no production, they have no farming, they have disorganised government, they have fractured societies, war-torn groupings. Quite right. If that's the case, and I agree with you, it's the case that it is savings and investment which lead to production, uh, stable laws, the sense of a rule of law, those sorts of things lead to prosperity. Consumption's never a problem. Uh, organizing investment, uh, having the confidence to invest. Why would someone invest only if that person has great confidence that in one year's time, five years' time, ten years' time, there's a security of property uh, that will enable him or her to recoup the fruits of that investment? Uh, modern economists simply um, uh, downplay that or assume it out of existence. Their problem, uh, or as they would have it, if we can only consume more, we'll be right. But as your listeners know, uh, consumption is never a problem. Uh, production or getting up out of bed in the morning, right? literally swinging the, bed, uh, the legs um, uh, out of bed, uh, putting in the X number of hours, that's a problem. One literally has to work for one's crust. If you're a tenured economist at Harvard or at Yale and so on, you have a defined benefit scheme, a uh, pension scheme, <laughs> you don't have to adjust. You're on $400,000 a year. The poor auto worker in Detroit certainly has to adjust because he or she's lost his job and the superannuation has gone down the gurgler. So there's a gargantuan gulf between the, area, uh, the, the unreality faced by lots of economists and the reality that stares normal normal everyday people in the face every day. Now, I had another economist in the studio here with me and I asked him what saved the Australian economy from the global financial crisis and he said the best government in the world, China. Could it be possible that uh, China, uh, we might get two bites of that cherry in China if there is another wave coming internationally that once again our relationship with China, our, our large amount of mineral exports to China will once again cushion us? Um, it's possible, but remember, China has done things that are not unlike what America, Europe, and other parts of the world have done. They've pulled a lot of private sector problems, or what passes for a private sector in China, and swept it under the, um, uh, the rug of the government or of the, uh, the central bank of China. So that um, if it is the case in the West that it is, has to be uh, savings and investment and so on, you can't, like the French do with foie gras and, 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 and stuffing things down the, uh, the goose's throat. If that applies here in the West, then the Chinese too are still up problems uh, for the future, that um, if a lot of analyses are to be believed, quite rightly, there are tens of millions of folks who move from country areas into, into the city each year. Mm. Uh, jobs have to be found. What the, the government there fears more than anything is the political unrest that unemployment would, um, uh, would generate. So the answer is that um, uh, Australians as individuals and the Commonwealth government and the RBA have put a lot of eggs figuratively into the Chinese basket. It strikes me that the Chinese basket, it is not obvious to me, uh, put it well, I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase, if it is not obvious to me that the policies uh, uh, enacted in the West over the past two years are going to work, then it is doubly um, questionable to me that the policies the Chinese have enacted over the couple of, uh, the past couple of years um, are going to work. Chris Leather is my guest. It's half past seven. Queensland wide. This is 612 ABC Brisbane, ABC Local Radio Queensland, ABC Digital, Local Radio, The Web and more. China sold off a whole lot of US bonds recently, although that's apparently not a sign of a lack of confidence as such in the US economy, uh, merely that they're spreading or diversifying their potential risk. They bought more European bonds, apparently. Uh, that's right. It's difficult to get a really detailed handle on uh, the actions of banks in this respect, exactly what do they own, what have they sold in a given week or month or what have you. But yes, I think that's an accurate characterization of their actions, that okay. perhaps they've decided they have uh, perhaps a few too many uh, American eggs in their basket, and so they're buying a few more uh, European eggs. All right. Now... Is there anything that the U.S. government can do to stop borrowing money? Is there anything they can do to, to get their debt under control without actually stalling any potential growth in their economy, which the rest of us apparently rely on, or the, the globe apparently relies upon? It's a revolutionary thought. One day, perhaps, uh, politicians will tell the truth, is to say that policies put into place over the past 30, 40, even 50 years, not only have they not worked, uh, they have impoverished the country, whether it's Social Security, making an entire nation reliant utterly upon the government for their retirement. Remember, before the 1930s, people had to rely upon themselves, and they did so. Well into the 1960s, uh, uh, the cost involved in uh, the birth of a child was on the order of 200 300 400 dollars. Why do I say that? Ron Paul, a member of the Congress who is uh, um, uh, an obstetrician by vocation, will constantly, relentlessly say these sorts of things. What's caused the price now to go into the tens of thousands is mammoth amounts of regulation, mammoth amounts of laws, the notion that uh, no American would think about insuring 
uh, uh, against uh, light bulbs. Light bulbs uh, burn out, and that's a normal sort of expense. A generation ago, doctors' bills were regarded as an expense, but now that the notion is in people's minds, everyone has to have insurance. Why? Because the costs have been uh, so wildly inflated. Uh, the answer to your question is a politician has to say, stand up at an election, and as a, as a slogan, say, no, we can't. The government cannot, from cradle to grave, uh, support you in your retirement. You have to finance it yourself. No, we cannot, uh, at the end, uh, uh, out of the end of a gun, uh, enforce democracy uh, around the world. The policies that have tried to do that have been catastrophic, both for the, the countries at the receiving end of the, uh, uh, of the aircraft carriers and the guns and whatnot, but for Americans themselves. No, they cannot, um, from cradle to grave, uh, try to meet every single demand that's put in front of them at an election. We'll have to see what comes out of the Four Corners program tonight but but if is it possible for the u.s to run out of money others like kotlikoff argued it already has run out of money they're just printing well, printing stuff is that it, right in an electronic sense yes it is what then happens is that so that, they're just printing money in the u.s the a, a, a quantitative easing is a very fancy phrase which basically <laughs> uh uh, uh hides attention from the fact that they're, they're, they're emitting funny money, that it's monopoly money, uh, it's backed by nothing, or you want, one uh, exchanges uh, a single dollar. Well, it's backed by the U.S. Federal Reserve, all their gold by stocks, the, isn't it? By the faith and credit of the United States government is the phrase, and there comes possibly an inflection point at which people realize, goodness gracious me, the, fa uh, the, the faith and credit or the good credit of the United States government uh, is, is not what it perhaps used to be. Uh, it certainly isn't worth a dollar. We're going to begin to discount that, which means that the price of these bonds falls. It's, it is quite a, a strange thing that a country which is effectively bankrupt, its bonds in international markets command the, the prices that they do because it's regarded as the least worst or the, um, uh, even though according to Kotlikoff, America's problems are uh, worse than Greece's problems are, uh, people around the world, when any, whenever anything is the matter, will flock to those debts. Uh, will push uh, by flocking to them, it pushes their prices uh, uh, to to high levels. It keeps interest rates at quite low levels. The the fear, I suppose, or what uh, uh, causes I, I'll work through it in, in, in my own mind, or it causes me a fair bit of time to work through it in my own mind, is what happens when people uh, in their own minds decide, gee, uh, this can't go on uh, because the U.S. is in effect bankrupt. We're not going to buy their debts. The Chinese and others uh, make that so decision. So what you're telling me is that it's all a game of confidence. In a monetary uh, uh, um, a set of monetary arrangements... For as long as international investors have confidence that somehow they'll get mm -hmm. a return from the U.S., that's at that point, that when at that point stops, right. that's when the, it, it collapses. Because it's not a question of capital properly conceived, it has to become a question of confidence. We're talking about thin okay. air here and not hard assets. It's not backed by gold. It's not backed by anything tangible. It's backed by people's faith in Obama. Once their faith in Obama or the U.S. government begins to slip, then uh, some very severe problems, which are always, which have existed for a long time, but then uh, they suddenly... He's uh, got to deal with it because he's the president, sort of thing. That's right. Okay, well, we'll be looking at um, his problems with another guest very soon. So quantitative easing, this phrase, it was announced last week or the week before that they, the US government was doing another round of quantitative easing. Mm -hmm. We didn't hear anything about it. No. Uh, only the financiers uh, uh, got the, the news. That's right. What, what, what did they do? Did they just print more money and inject it into the US economy? That's the short answer, that the Federal Reserve basically prints the money and then buys US Treasury bonds. There's always going to be a ready purchaser. So they invest in themselves? Uh, correct. Yep. It's a bit uh, in the first... You can't do that if you're a company, can you? Uh, no, it's, it's illegal. It's called counterfeiting and one goes to, uh, <laughs> to prison for uh, certain amounts of time. Much like in the First World War, no one can think of anything other than sending thousands of men above the parapets to be machine gunned down. Well, let's try it now with tens of thousands, with hundreds of thousands and so on. No one can think of anything differently. As mad as it was, as, as obvious as the uh, results were of the countless numbers of dead, so too with quantitative easing. The previous rounds haven't worked. America remains mired. Uh, there's roughly 10% unemployment. If it were defined in exactly the same way today as it was in Jimmy Carter's day, that's to say roughly 30 years ago, the rate of unemployment would be closer to 18% then to 10%, but each subsequent revision of the definition, lo and behold, isn't it amazing, is always one that benefits the government by uh, uh, suppressing the rate So of, they've uh, redefined what they call unemployment in the US? Yes, gradually, not on a monthly basis, but a couple of times a year, two or three times a year over the past 30 years, cumulatively, that's uh, halved the, uh, the rate of unemployment, uh, purely on a definitional basis. So on the basis of the definition, if, we were, if they were where they were 30 years ago under Jimmy Carter, yes. they'd have an unemployment rate of 18%. On the order of 18%. But with the definition they 
years of unemployment in the US today, it's only 10%. Only oh, 10%. Sorry. Only 10%. Sorry. That's right. That's right. Uh, with quantitative easing, it hasn't worked. It's shuffling. It's uh, moving money from uh, this shell into that one. It has nothing to do with real savings. It has nothing to do with admitting the problems of the past uh, that the government and the people have spent far too much, have borrowed way too much, have saved way too little answering a previous question or returning to the answer to a previous question until re people come to realize that the basis of wealth derives from savings, entrepreneurial action, and not from spending. These sorts of problems not just are going to continue, but they're going to get worse. So your grandma or my grandma was right. Save more, spend less, keep out of debt. If you can't afford it today, uh, save your pennies until you can. Uh, save for a rainy day. And alas, it's begun to rain, it seems to me, so that uh, uh, our grandparents, a previous generation having lived through bad times, uh, learned proper lessons from it. Uh, we haven't learned the proper lessons from our uh, five minutes of, uh, 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 of economic bad times a couple of years ago. So the storm may well return. I'll be very curious what uh, Four Corners has to say. Thanks for coming on. Great pleasure. Chris Leithner from Leithner and Associates.